Hey everybody, Sue here from She Sells. Uh, coming to you with another little video today. I'm gonna continue talking about research today. You can kind of tell it's a little chilly here. I think it's right at 30 degrees. I've seen just a few little spits of snow here. Don't expect anything big. Um, it makes it feel a little colder because yesterday it was in the 60s. We had rain though, and I'd rather it be cold and not raining. It's pretty cloudy, but we're not really supposed to have rain today, and I suppose if it does continue to be 30 and start, we start to get some precipitation, it might be a little bit of snow, but I'm not too worried about that. So I talked to you a little bit in the last video about research and talked about rank. Um, it's really only one thing to be looking for and most people who are starting out just go with the ranks and I was talking about in the last video if you stick with the really low like one two percent I know I threw out the five percent figure last time but when I started to look at the toys that I was researching throughout the day I realized I don't go much past two percent um, and that can be like a hundred and fifty thousand and below so right there you have 150,000 toys to pick from that are 2% or less. Uh, and by that I mean it's the best 2% selling toys on Amazon. Because the lower the number, the more sales you have. And just because something has a great rank though doesn't necessarily mean that it sells every day or every week. Um, but again, the, that lower rank, staying under 2%, it's a pretty good chance it's going to sell. You've always got the chance of a lot of other sellers coming on and tanking the price. Um, but, you know, it's all a game. And the more you learn, the more uh, the more chances you have of, I guess, selling it better, if, if you want to say once you start learning things past the rank. So a couple things I was going to talk about today was how many sellers are on a listing. And I don't really hear many people talking about that. Um, on your app, it, it will show you how many offers, and that means how many sellers there are on that particular listing. I'm not really scared up to, you know, 30, 40, 50 sellers, because if you think about it, that's like 50 stores across the country, really. Um, Obviously, on, on a really high rank with a really high RO, ROI, I'd still I still might list something, but not if there was you know that many sellers on it. Usually, on a really high ranking item, I'd say there's usually less than ten. And sometimes you're the only FBA, which that also makes a difference. Um, you know, if you're finding a toy, or, okay, I'm just saying toy. You're finding a product that is a pretty good seller, but everybody's merchant fulfilled on there, um, and you want to go ahead and send it in under FBA, then sometimes that gives you a little better opportunity to sell. Uh, sometimes, though, you might find that it's like a hazmat or something is why there's only merchant fulfill on that particular item. And hazmat doesn't just mean it's some seriously dangerous item. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as a magic marker, and... So hazmat can be any like dan dangerous chemical or battery. Sometimes it's a toy with a battery. And sometimes after people send in the qualifying paperwork, it becomes non-hazmat, but that it takes a while sometimes. So there's different reasons why there could be only merchant fulfilled. So you can see right here how there's exceptions to every rule and there just isn't a simple, people often ask me the question, well, what rank do you go up to in toy? What rank would you sell at? What's the highest rank you would sell at? And there just isn't a black and white answer because there's so many variables. But the more you learn about your products, the more you learn about the variables, um, the more knowledgeable you become, the better capable you will be of deciding what to purchase. But it comes with practice and time and learning. So we've talked about the rank, and then we talked about how many sellers are on a listing. Here's the thing, like if, if there's a toy on clearance at Target, 
and it has a really good rank, like say 30,000. Um, and right then you're able to make money on it. But there's 112 sellers, that means everybody across the country is buying that target item on clearance. And it's likely going to tank. Now, if you go along with Scott, um, the bearded picker, if you follow him, he talks about the Ricky Bobby school of reselling. And that's when you make the money, you're first in or you're last out. So the first people in, say you walk into Target, you see a really good item. It just went on clearance. Well, if you can buy that item today, and ship it today or tomorrow and you have a warehouse you ship to regularly that's not far away and you have a shipment or a warehouse that you most likely will ship to that's not a transfer or you have premium placement which gets you faster to a warehouse and not a transfer then you're likely to be like the first in and able to sell quickly but anything past that, you're going to be kind of in the middle. And the new sellers who thought it looked really good when they bought it in the store, they get it home, they ship it in, and they start watching, and they start dropping that price. And then the people who have the automatic repricers are just automatically lowering to those prices. So a lot of people are going down. Some automatic repricers go a penny below the highest or, you know, the buy box. So it just starts this cascade. That's what we call tanking, if that's what you didn't know, understand the word tanking. So it's just one person after another is lowering and lowering and lowering the price. It's not necessarily just the new people who are scared and want to get their money back. Um, sometimes it is a person who's bought a big quantity and they bought it way less than you. Like they went in and made a deal at Walmart with the manager and got him for less than what everybody else is getting at clearance. So at that lower price, he's still making a little bit of money and just wants to get out quick. So there's just a lot of reasons why the price would be going down. But eventually what happens is, you know, say there was 112 people on the listing. Three weeks later, there's 50 people on the listing. Three weeks after that, there's 22 people on the listing. And those people know that if you hold out, it's not always a guarantee, but if you hold out, the price will start going up again. Um, and then if that toy was on clearance, say maybe it's not gonna come back, and then people are still desiring that toy, especially if it was a pretty low rank, it must have been a popular toy. Um, and kid goes to their friend's house and they want one. Mom can't find it at Walmart. And so she goes on to Amazon. But it's harder to find now. People aren't sending it in anymore. So the price is going up and up. So that's some of the reasons. Um, you know, why either a price goes down or why you can sell it by getting it in fast or waiting. Now, the same thing could happen, the same scenario, and then three, four weeks in, Amazon buys out all the rest of that toy company's product, and they put it for sale lower than the lowest price. Not always either, but say they put it for sale lower than the lowest price, and now for 12 months it's been on clear, it's been on buy box with Amazon, or just at that level where you really can't make money. So there's just all kind of scenarios. Um, so, you know, it depends on your business model. Do you want to wait things out? Do you have the capital to wait things out? Or if you have very little capital, then don't try for those products on clearance at Target that everybody across the whole country is going to buy. Now, if you regularly go to like 40 Walmarts in your town, your city, and you see regularly that these same seven items or these same 14 items are on sale at every Walmart and then you happen into another Walmart and you see something really cheap that nobody else had on sale they're still full price everywhere else and this happened to me when I went out to Charlotte a couple months ago as a matter of fact it was a bigger product so I think I bought 20 of them and I I really thought about getting a U-Haul <laughs> and they must have had a hundred and I had bought them the year before just like that 
and they stayed the whole rest of the year at full price everywhere else. I don't know why this particular Walmart had two pallets of them out in the middle of the aisle, but I loaded up three carts full, and as I was doing that, uh, and I was taking my time and looking over every box, because like I said, it's a little bit bigger item, and you know, they get dinged around, they've been moved around the Walmart, whatever, so I have to go through and find all, I flipped the box all around and looked for the ones that didn't have any dings in the corners or whatever. Anyway, I was loading up the carts and this person that worked in the toy department came by and goes, I'm so glad somebody's buying some of those. <laughs> of course, you get funny looks when you go up to the cash register too. And then it was also a product that prompted the cashier to ask if he wanted the extended warranty for $2 or whatever, which I did not. But she did like multiple so she scanned one and did 20, and then it rang up 20 of the extended warranties, which I did not want. So, anyway, let's, let's just say that the people behind me in line weren't very happy with me because we ended up having to call the manager and blah, blah, blah. But it, it got done. It got taken care of. So, of course, I veered off onto... 17 other things and now I have to think back where I was where I was going with all that so we talked about rank we talked about how many sellers on the listing and then there's one more thing which really I don't believe you can find out from the app um, the central you know Amazon seller app so I do use Scoutify 2 and I do kind of go back and forth between the app and Scoutify 2 Scoutify 2 comes with inventory labs for free when, when you're paying for inventory labs, which is $50 a month. That's the inventory system. So Scoutify 2, you can click through the research button and you can pull up Kiva or Camel, Camel, Camel or the actual Amazon listing. Uh, once in a while, I like to pull up the actual Amazon listing because as far as I know from the seller app, you can't look at reviews. And sometimes I find a really good product, but it's got like two stars out of five or one star out of five. And I usually will not purchase that for selling. Uh, but sometimes I just want to see what, you know, if somebody says like, oh, I can buy this cheaper at the store or some stupid review like that, then I may still buy that product. But if it says, you know, there's three bad reviews and they all say the same thing like, uh, uh, I saw, I I think I talked about it with this transformer. It said it, it doesn't transform back into a car easily. And then at least two people said that it, it broke real easily. Like when you were transforming it back, there was some part that broke off easily. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy something like that. So that was nice to have the button that you could click through to the actual listing. Because you can easily click on the stars and read the reviews at that point. But if you go back and look at Keepa, and this is something, you know, if you're not in a hurry and it's more of like a replenishable that you're looking at and you take down the information or the UPC code and you can go home and look it up on Keepa. Or you can just go to your browser on your phone and look at Keepa as well. But one easy thing, if you don't even know how to read a Keepa chart, is how many days this product's been available. Actually, there's two things you can see quickly without knowing how to read a cam Keepa chart. So you can see how many days, and it's the bottom right-hand corner. It will usually show like the last 90 days of sales. But you can just click on that number and say something like all time or all or something. And that will show you the keep a chart ever since that's been listed on Amazon. So what I like to know is, you know, I scan something, oh wow, this is making you know, 200% ROI right now. And then I click through to do the research on Keepa and it says the listing's been up for seven days or 11 days or even 20 days. That is not likely gonna stay that high, especially if it's readily available in stores. It's just that only a couple people found it so far and have shipped it in and so they're able to get a higher price for it. But once a lot more people start finding that and sending it in on that listing, it's likely to go down. So that's not something I would necessarily buy it for the reason that it's selling for a lot right now. Um, 
if it's been up for a long time, like if it says like 1200 days, then I know the price is more stable. The other thing you can easily note is that when Amazon itself has it in stock, it will show the background of that chart in orange. So if I pull up something that is not making a lot, but it's something that I'm possibly thinking about, and I pull it up and see that Amazon has been on it solid for the last couple years, it won't necessarily scare me away from buying that item just because Amazon's been on it. But if you look through, now this is something, you know, uh, more advanced, I guess. If you look through and you see, you can, you can touch an area, a date, and find out what the price was at the time. If it's been a steady price for several months, and you can make a good bid on it matching Amazon, then that doesn't scare me away. But if Amazon, okay, here's another scenario. Wow, this is making really good money right now. So I click on Keepa and I look at it, and Amazon's been on it a long time. Um, and suddenly, they're off it right now. That's why the price has gone up. And then, uh, but you can tell looking over time, it's almost always been orange. If you can get that in quickly before Amazon stocks back in, you might sell some and you might make good money on it. But if Amazon comes back in stock tomorrow or before you get your items in, then and Amazon's been on it a long time at that lower price, it's likely you're going to be stuck with it for a while. So just all kinds of things to think about when you're doing research. And the more you learn, the more you learn to read a Keepa chart. The Keepa chart will show you how many times it has sold in a month. Now, just because something... Because what happens is the rank will drop. And this is what you can't know, um, how many of that sold that day. So maybe it's selling five times in a month, but maybe three of those times it sold two or three. So you can't, you can't necessarily know every detail, but it gives you good ideas. And the more and more you learn and the more and more tools you learn to use, the more information you have, the better purchases you'll make. So these are things you can be learning over time. The other thing I wanted to talk about today was BrickSeek. And a lot of people, I've just been seeing a lot of people on Facebook and in the chats with other sellers. Um, especially like Scott and Shane talk about BrickSeek a lot. And people jump on and pay that $30 a month, $29.99. And then they say, hey, BrickSeek doesn't work. This is crap. Um, you know, all kinds of things. Well, number one is BrickSeek... I don't know how they do it, but they get the inventory um, records from Walmart themselves. Now there's reason why sometimes the inventory at Walmart themselves is not accurate. I used to regularly look for items at this one particular store, um, and then what I realized is that store is not in the best area. I've seen many times like cops out front with, you know, somebody who was shoplifting. And when an item is shoplifted, Amazon, or sorry, Walmart doesn't take it out of inventory because they don't know it's missing. I mean, I'm assuming at some point they will do an actual physical inventory, I don't know how many times a year, and, and adjust those things. Um, and it might even be only once a year or once every couple years, who knows, but until that point, it's going to show that there's an item left or six items left, but they're not really in that store. So I, I know in that particular store, I just never even go to that store looking for something with BrickSeek anymore. I mean, there's probably 50 Walmarts in the Atlanta area, and there's a few that I ignore, and that's one of them. And if you go to a lot of Walmarts, I tend to have, like, quote-unquote, my favorite Walmarts where I often find things. 
or you know this one has a really good clearance section with their prices clearly labeled um, this one's just you know a pile of mess thrown in there but I know I can dig out some good ones once in a while so you kind of start getting your favorite Walmarts and your Walmarts you don't really go to the other thing is I, I was at a Walmart I was buying up this particular doll and they were newer, so they weren't in every Walmart yet. So I had driven to this Walmart, and let's just say I don't go to this Walmart after dark. <laughs> but I went to this Walmart, and I was buying two carts full of this doll. And I went to the garden center thinking that I could sort of sneak out that way and not look so weird standing in line with two carts of this. If you ask me, it was a really ugly doll. So I went, I went to the garden center and I, I start, okay, so there's three different, it's all the same doll, let's just say it's Barbie, it wasn't, but it's all the same type of doll, but three different outfits, let's, let's just say three different outfits. So I have six of this one, eight of this one, and 12 of this one. So I start to take out, you know, one or two of this one, one or two of that one, and I'm going to tell them I have eight of this one. I mean, sometimes they want to scan each one, one by one, but sometimes they'll take the, you know, I have eight of this one, six of this one. So I start to put a couple on the counter, and he says to me, oh, well, they're all the same price, right? And I say, yes. And he goes, okay, well, that's it. You don't have to take them out. So he rings, you know, rings one up and says 24 of them. I know I didn't add that up right, but let's just say I had 24. So now the inventory is going to show wrong all three of those dolls because it's going to show this one's out of stock and there really is 12 left. This one shows, you know, the opposite. So anyway, three different products are going to have the wrong um, inventory level. Now, you know, I go sometimes to Walmart and I buy a whole bunch of Hot Wheels. And every set, like like the summer 50th anniversary Hot Wheels collection, it's like, if you look on the corner, it's like one of 282. All 282 of those have the same skew. But the people who are following the rules of Walmart have to scan every single item. So that irritates me as much as the guy who wants to scan one doll and put in 24. <laughs> because if they, if, if, and, and I usually stack mine by like. So these all go with this set, these all go with that set. But there's people who will scan every single one of them. And then I cringe when they are just tossing too many in a bag or... Oh, that's, a, that's something for another day. But anyway, there's different reasons why the inventory can be wrong. That's my point. So, that's also another point. I was looking for these, this one particular toy. And every time I checked it on BrickSeek, it showed out of stock, that no Walmart had any of them. But what I realized, then I'd go to the store and I'd say, what do you mean they didn't have any? They have a whole bunch of these. What I realized was, it, it was also an assortment. So even though there was very specific characters, the whole assortment was, say, let's just say Barbie assortment, instead of Barbie ski, Barbie dentist, Barbie whatever. Um, so you had to know that particular skew, and I was only wanting some of the characters, so even when I started to use the proper assortment skew, I couldn't know if they had the three characters I wanted. I only know they have some of that dozen selection. So, again, you know, Brick Seek's not a miracle. It can't tell you everything. It only tells you what Walmart thinks its own stores have. 
Um, it seems like there was something else I was going to talk about with BrickSeek. Okay, so here's a tip on how it's more likely that the Walmart will have something. Now, if you're going to drive a good ways, you know, you're going to drive 50, 60 miles, and it says that they have 11 of this $90 item, you can try calling the store, and sometimes they will go look for you. Other times, they put you on hold, and two hours later, you'll, you're still sitting there. And sometimes they might really look, sometimes they might not. I can't guarantee anything like that. But if you have the Walmart app on your phone, and you change it to the zip code of the store that you're wanting to look for. So on the Walmart app, you can put in, type in the name of a product, or you can type in a UPC code. So you've typed that in and it pops up. Well, it shows you normally the online product and price. So then you have to click another tab and it says in my store, but it will only check the one store. Now, if that item is in stock in that one store, I don't remember how you, how, I don't remember if you scroll down, it's changed recently, but you can sometimes see other stores where it's available as well. Um, but if you're looking for that particular store, you click change, put the zip code in of that store that you're looking for, and you can get that from BrickSeek. Um, and then choose that location to make your store. Now, then if you see the product there, it says they have 10 on BrickSeek, and you've clicked on it, and it says, in stock, aisle 11, or aisle L11. Then it's more likely that it's gonna be there because Walmart is telling you they have it in the store and this is the location. If it does not show the location, but it still says in stock, it might be that they're, you know, say BrickSeek says they have one or two, or it says low stock, um, but it does not show the location in Walmart. It's less likely that it's gonna be out on the floor. Possibly there's one in the back room, possibly, been damaged that I'm not sure about but that is going to be less likely that it's there out on the floor because the Walmart app will tell you the location of that item the other thing is and I know Scott's brought this up before and I didn't know this till I drove uh, I was all the way on the other side of town I drove 20 more miles out of my way and this was two Christmases ago to get 26 of the LOL Big Surprise Dolls for $68.99 or whatever they were. I got all the way there and could not find them anywhere in the toy department. At that time, I'm pretty sure the Walmart app in the previous go-round did not show location in the store. Or I just didn't know better. Um, I had the toy department person helping me. Because the Walmart app itself said in stock. So uh, then we went to the assistant manager, the manager of the store. Finally, one last person said, I know what it is. They're on layaway. So when they're on layaway, they're still showing as available. So they're, so they're not out on the floor. And it doesn't say the location is layaway. So that's another reason the app could be off or the BrickSeek could be off. So, you know, BrickSeek, it is what it is. It's showing you what Walmart says is in stock. Now, I have used it a little bit for Lowe's, and that seems to be pretty right on. Maybe there isn't as much theft from Lowe's, I'm not sure. Or maybe, I'm not really sure why, but Lowe's does seem to, to do pretty well with theirs. You can also go to the Lowe's app and just order something and for in-store pickup. So then you'll know for sure if it's there or not. But sometimes when it gets low in inventory and or it's on clearance, it's not available to do an order online. Now there's some newer stores they've added and I really haven't, I did use CVS at Christmas time and that was fairly accurate. Um, so again, maybe there isn't as much theft at CVS or their system is a little bit better than Walmart. I'm not really sure the reason why. 
So, this is what I say about Brixie. Before you just jump in and do the $29.99, and there's also a $9.99. Now, on both the $9.99 and the $29.99, they will send you an email every day, once a day, and tell you some of the new prices that have dropped, um, what's the most searched for item on Walmart and Target. As far as I know, you can only get Walmart and Target emails. I haven't gotten an email about anything else, so if somebody knows that you can add some of the other stores, let me know. I don't know if there's a setting in there, but I only get the Walmart and the Target um, ads every day. So then, let's see, besides that, when you're using the, I think it's only on the $29.99, when you search for a product, it gives you a 100 mile range versus a 50 mile range in the other two. And the last thing I know that's different is in the $29.99, you can do the shopping list. So you can click and add things to your shopping list and you can bring it up by store. I have never figured out how to do the nearest me. I have my zip code in there. It's probably something locator system. I haven't used that one before, but I've heard Scott talking about it. So, unless you're really shopping more than 100 miles away, or you will seriously benefit from the shopping list versus just jotting it down yourself, I would just start out with the free one and start using it for searches and then see if you'd like to take advantage. The other thing you can add with the higher up prices, and I'm not sure which one this comes with, the $9.99 or the $29.99, you can set a... It's not warning, but I can't think of, um, I can't think of what you call it, um, a pr for a price change. And so you'll get, it, or in stock, out of stock, something's out of stock and it's something that you're really watching for. You'll get an email that it's, it's in stock now. Um, and then you can go ahead and grab it and purchase it right off of there if it's not a clearance item. I had one or two things I was I was doing that for, and no matter what is, no matter if I just got it three minutes before, I would go to purchase it and it was gone already. It probably was those LOL things too a couple years ago. I don't, I really don't remember. So, my suggestion is, like I said, just to start out with the free Brick Seek and use it to search. You know, I found this at this Walmart. I want to find out if any more in my area have them before I just start driving to every Walmart or every CVS or every whatever. Um, and then, if you know, learn about what what you can gain from using the other ones and go ahead and buy them. Now, I have used the $29.99. I feel like I used the $9.99 way back at the beginning. Most of the time, I just stick to the free one. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go over some speed bumps. Most of the time I just stick with the free one, but when I'm really busy searching for stuff, I will go ahead and use the paid one. I have used the shopping list, I have taken advantage of the 100 mile because I, I will often, you know, do some travel RA and I want to have my lists ready and information ready before I drive all the way to another town. So, the other thing is, you sign up for these apps, say you sign up for the $9.99, and you know, a year later you realize I'm not even using this and I'm still paying for it every month. Check your subscriptions every couple months and see what you're using and not using. And yes, it's just $10, but that's $120 a year. If you're not using it, don't keep it. If you're not gonna do RA for a while or something's going on for the next couple months, you're busy buying a product and not doing searching right now. Turn it off, then turn it back on in a couple months. I've turned on and off BrickSeek several times. So save your pennies. You know, that's $120 in profit you lost because you were spending that on something you weren't using. Um, so definitely take advantage of all the tools that you need and can use. There's nothing wrong with spending money to make money, but don't just have it to have it. And then the other thing is, I don't believe there's any free, there, you know, using the Brixie app is free, um, except for the 
sort of extended um, the things that I spoke about. But there's often apps that you can have a seven day free trial, like Tac Tactical Arbitrage has a seven day free trial. Just make sure that you try something out when you actually have time to use it. So don't say, hey, I wanna try Tactical Arbitrage and sign up for it and then have a really busy week and not be able to try it till a little bit later. So I hope you found some good information today and I'll ask you to do the YouTube thing, like, subscribe, and share. And I am off to purchase. I'm nice and warm now. Now I gotta get out of my nice warm car and go freeze again, but that's okay. I, I'd rather, much rather that than the pouring rain that I've had many times this year. So we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.